Which you guys today we're taking a look at the first thing you must do with a new laptop now i've just purchased the new laptop this one is a lenovo legion 5 so i'm going to take you through step by step and show you what i do on a brand new laptop when i buy one so you can follow along if you purchase a brand new laptop it doesn't matter what make or model these are the steps that i would take for every brand of laptop that i buy the first thing i'm going to be doing is removing all of the bloatware it comes pre-installed with a ton of applications that I don't need or don't want. So the first thing is to remove all of this from the actual laptop itself. So I'm going to go into add and remove programs. You'll see there is McAfee on here, and this is a trial uh, version of McAfee. They want you to register and pay for the full version. And I don't want to be forced into buying stuff that I don't want. So I'm going to remove all of this from the computer. You can do this from add and remove programs, or you can use programs like Revo uninstaller. And some people go as far as resetting the PC uh, back to defaults, which will mean it will remove all of the software. And uh, I'm not going to go and do that because it can take a bit of time. So I'm just going to go through and remove some of the software via the uninstaller here. Now, some of the proprietary software that comes with uh, these laptops is pretty useful lenovo have their own software which they do install which i tend to still use on laptops so i'm not going to uninstall this but there is other stuff on here which i do want to remove so i'm just going to go through the uninstall process and remove it so you can see here you still have an activated subscription this will be only a short subscription maybe something like a month or something like that and once it once it runs out they'll just keep bombarding you with advertisements and pop-up uh, to try to purchase the actual full version of it and i don't want that so i'm going to remove it and uninstall it now it doesn't really matter what sort of laptop you've purchased which manufacturer they all come with pre-installed bloatware on them and you will have to go through the process of uninstalling all of the software from those laptops so whatever laptop you've got it doesn't really matter they all come with it on there next up we're going to be taking a look at another thing that i like to do is that is to update the operating system straight away. The reason why is because these laptops could have been sitting in a box for a few months, which means that they're going to be outdated. So I always like to go to the Windows update and update uh, the version of Windows. Now, because this is Windows 11, it's going to be having some serious updates available for it. So I'm going to go into the Windows update section and make sure I update the laptop to the latest version. You can see here there is quite a few updates available. So I'm just going to go ahead and download all of these and get these installed onto the laptop. Now, if you want to create a, a clone of your drive or whether you want to back up your complete operating system, then you can do. I'm going to miss that part out because I don't feel the need anymore in 2022 to have to do that with a brand new machine because I can quite easily reinstall Windows and it will automatically uh, put everything back onto the system. Windows does a pretty good job at installing all the drivers that you need. And again, uh, I can always get the Lenovo software from the Lenovo website. Or if you're running another laptop, maybe MSI or any other type of laptop, you can go to the manufacturer's website and download the required software for those laptops. Now, next up, I'm going to be changing the uh, scale on the desktop here. I'm going to right click on the desktop and change the scale back a little bit and the reason why is because you get a bit more real estate on your monitor so this is a 1920 by 1080p uh, screen on here and as you can see here what i'm going to do is i'm going to be changing this you can see it's set to 125 percent which is recommended and uh, i'm just going to scale that back to 100 percent this will make everything a little bit smaller but it will also give me a bit more real estate on the uh, monitor screen here now, again, if you don't want to do this, you can skip this part. And if you have got a 4K resolution, you may want to play around with the settings a bit because that could make it a bit too small if you go back too far. So I'm going to leave this at 100%. That's good enough for what I need on this laptop. And it just gives me a little bit more room to move. So let's close that off and move on to the next one, which is the window settings here. I'm going to change some window settings to make it a bit more uh, user-friendly towards what I need to do. So I'm going to open up uh, the file explorer here and uh, once we open this up i'm going to go into the top three dots up the top here and i want to change the file extensions and show hidden files folders and drives so go into options and i'm going to change a few settings here to make it much more user friendly for me now i'm going to change the uh, quick access to this pc and also down in the privacy section i'm just going to remove these two check marks here and i'm going to clear this section here and apply an okay 
on this. Once we've done this, we can move to the View tab here, and I'm going to show hidden files, folders, and drives because I like to have access to the App Data folder and places like that. And also, I'm going to remove the check mark from Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Why they keep putting the check mark in there in 2022, I don't know. It just lets you see the extensions of files, and it stops people being tricked into clicking on files that are supposed to be PDF files and are actually executable files, which could be malware. So I'm going to change that. Next up, we're going to make some other changes here. So let's go ahead and do some other changes. Now, if you do have Windows 11 installed on your laptop and uh, you've got this new menu system here and you don't like it, then I'll show you what to do a little bit later on. But I'm going to make some changes to the recommended section on here. So go to personalization here and you should see a place called start. Go into that section there and then you should see some rocker buttons here saying show recently uh, added apps and there's another one here which we can uh, turn off. Once you turn these off and you go back to the actual menu system, uh, it won't show up all of the stuff on there. I don't particularly like it on there. It's just a bit uh, cluttered and messy. But if you do, then you can leave that on. Now, we'll be changing the start menu to something else, which I'll show you in a second. But if you see here, there's a bunch of bloatware in here, which I'll remove a little bit later on, which is applications which come bloated with Windows as well. Next up, I'm going to be changing the start menu. Now, you've got two choices here. We can use Start 11, which is a very useful little application which you can install. It's not free, uh, but it is a, a really nice start uh, menu system. Or you can use Start All Back, which is also about $5 or something like that. And it will change the look and overhaul feel of uh, the actual menu here, which I prefer. It gives me a much more better feel of, say, Windows 7 or Windows 10 of old. And I do like that sort of feel when I'm using the Start menu rather than using the clunky old menu that they've put together for Windows 11 at the moment. I'm going to be installing Start 11. And again, it is about $5.99, which is pretty cheap. And it's for the lifetime for one PC which I find very affordable. So I'm going to download this and get it installed. If you want to try it out first, there is a try now button, which you can hit, which gives you a 30 day uh, trial. For both of these, you can get a 30 day trial. So just hit this and install it. And then you can have a look and see whether you like it or not. I'm not going to do an in-depth video on this right now because I've already covered some of these before, but I'm just going to get it installed and change it so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to do some settings on here and change it up a little bit and I'll show you exactly the sort of look I've gone for in this one here for myself. There is plenty of settings inside here you can mess around with. If you want to see a full in-depth video, check some of my uh, back catalogue and you'll see them in there. Next up, I'm going to change the uh, theme on this. I don't like the light theme. I prefer a dark theme. So I'm going to go into themes and I'm going to choose a darker theme for this laptop because I do think it's better on the eyes and I just prefer to see a darker screen rather than a bright white screen. So I'm going to use one of these here. You can hover over these. There's plenty of them available. I'm just going to select this one here, and this will give me a much more nicer look for myself. If you don't like the dark theme, you can use the light theme. It's entirely up to you. Now look at the menu uh, here. It's a lot more user-friendly, and I just like the overall feel and look of this uh, Windows 11 with that start menu on there. Next, another important setting I'm going to change is the MUX setting. I'm going to talk about this a little bit so you can get more performance out of your GPU if you've got a laptop of this caliber, which has a 3060 in it. If you want to see a review of this laptop, then let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to make a video of this particular laptop and also show you how to choose the right laptop for yourself. Now, inside uh, the Legion here, you can see this is their own software, and every piece of software is different for every laptop, but you should see there is a hybrid mode on here. If you toggle this on, this gives you the full uh, performance going right through the GPU that's built into the laptop, which means you're going to get more FPS, but it does eat battery life a little bit more. So if you're trying to use this on a battery uh, laptop without going into the mains, it will eat that battery life. So just remember, if you're in hybrid mode, it will use more performance. The downfall side of this is as well is every time you toggle this on or off, because if you're using normal tasks, I wouldn't advise you to leave the MUX setting on because obviously it does eat battery life. And it does mean that you have to keep restarting the PC every single time you toggle it on and off. So just bear that in mind. It is a bit of a, a headache to keep restarting, but if you want to enable it, I'll show you how to do it. It's just that little rocker switch on the right-hand side here 
and this will give us much more performance. Keep an eye on the GPU and the VRAM there. You can see it's low at the moment, and that's because it's not enabled. So now I've restarted the system. Let's take a look at hybrid mode. You can see the VRAM has gone right up, and also the GPU has gone right up, and that means we're utilizing that power. Now, if you want to play games and you're using this laptop for gaming because it does have an RTX 3060 in it, that means you're going to get much more better performance and much more FPS. Now, if you're not going to be gaming and you want to use your laptop for work, i.e., you know, surfing the web, using your browser or emails and things like that, then you want to toggle this off because that will preserve battery life and you won't be eating up your battery uh, because it's enabled. You're not going to be gaining FPS when you're using your mail client and things like that. So just toggle it off when you're not using it. Next, I'd like to go into the Lenovo software and check for updates, make sure everything is all fully updated, and I've got all the latest critical updates and recommended updates for the system. Especially a new laptop that you've just got out of the box, you definitely want to uh, be checking for updates on all the system because it has been probably sitting in that box for a few weeks, so you want to check it out. Also, disable lock screen. I have no use for lock screen so I'm just going to be disabling this. There is an actual uh, registry file you can download and disable it, or you can do it in the registry uh, yourself manually. Just for this video, I'm going to be using this little file here just to run it, and it will disable it. And that means I'll just go straight to the desktop without the login all the time. Every time you leave it for a while, it just goes to the lock screen. I don't want that feature enabled. So by disabling it, it just turns it off. Next up, we're going to be dealing with the privacy settings now. Windows has become bloated with privacy settings and I have to go through and turn all of these off. You can see here, if you want to manually go through your system and turn off all of the stuff you don't require, then just toggle them off. And the reason why I say this is because if you don't use inking and typing and personalization, this is going to be sending telemetry and data back to Microsoft. And also it's a service and it will slow down the system. So I'm just going to be turning off as much as possible here to try and preserve battery life and also just make the system run a little bit smoother. Now, again, I will be installing uh, the light version on here at some stage. So when I set up the laptop for the very first time, it asked me to sign in to an account to set up an account because it's Windows 11 home. Even if it was Windows 10 home, you would still have to do the same thing. So now what I do is I just took the uh, internet out and then basically logged back in to a local account and then I have now got a local account on this laptop without having to sign into a Microsoft account. That's important to me because I don't really want to be linked to Microsoft uh, on this laptop. And again, once you've done it once, they'll know automatically because they have your information. So what I've done is I've just turned off all of the features I don't need, like location and uh, other stuff like inking and other data collecting uh, sort of thing like diagnostics and things like that. Now you can manually go through all of this or you can use programs to do it or you can go down the more severe route and use scripts to remove all of this stuff. Like I've said before with scripts, if you don't know where they come from, be very careful when you run them. Just recently, there was an article about one of the scripts that were on GitHub that had malware embedded inside it and it was putting it onto people's systems when they were running it. So be very, very careful which ones you run on your system, as I've always said. Again, you can use programs like o and o, which is shut up 10 and it also works for 11 as well and this disables it and you can completely reverse this as well it doesn't install anything on your system and you can run this and completely reset everything back to defaults if you wanted to this is more the safer route i would advise people to go down if they want to turn off all of the privacy stuff next up we're going to be taking a look at optimizing your power settings this is your battery preserving uh, settings here if you want to use a uh, power saving you can go in here and change your uh, battery power plan inside here you can see it's set to the legion balanced mode this is uh, lenovo's mode if you want to set it to just a general balance mode which is recommended they can you can do that here i'm going to leave it set to balance because i think that's exactly where i want it but if you want to go into a uh, battery saving mode here power saving mode you can do and that does preserve a bit of power you can also turn the brightness down by about say 11 percent, and that does preserve quite a lot of battery power if you want to do that, if you don't like a super bright screen, it also helps with your eyes as well. OK, so let's move on to the final thing and we'll wrap this video up. So the final thing that you're going to have to do is download all of your programs and you can use Nunite to do this and install all of your programs. You go onto the website, put the check marks in 
uh, for all the programs that you want to install, whether it be VLC, whether it be Chrome, uh, you know, Firefox, whatever it is that you want to use, any sort of compression software, uh, any sort of media software, uh, runtimes, imaging, documents, you can see it there. You put the check marks in and you can run it. Also, you might want to put on another antivirus software because we did remove the uh, temporary trial version of McAfee. I would advise you to get the Bitdefender free version uh, and you can install that and it will give you plenty of protection from ransomware and also malware. So those are my choices uh, for what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to install any of this stuff because this laptop is really designed for tutorials on YouTube. That's all it's going to be used for. But if you do want to see a full review of it and some other video tutorials with laptops, then let me know in the comment section below. That is why I bought the laptop to do some tutorials with laptops. So let me know what sort of laptop videos you want to see in the comments section. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. That is the first things you must do with your new laptop. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a special shout out to Phil's Computer Repair, Albert Hewson, Geo Sam, Welsh Tony One, and Gary Belts. I really do appreciate the support. These guys have joined my tier three YouTube members group. I appreciate that. Also, a big special shout out to all my other YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I always appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. If you've joined my Discord server and you are a YouTube member, let me know in the general chat and I'll give you the appropriate role. Bye for now. Thank you.